Just give it a couple minutes. I started a little early. We started about six o'clock. I hope everyone's doing well. Yeah, I'm about seven minutes early, but um, I'll wait till uh, six o'clock. <coughs> Let some people join and then we'll get started on the streaming. I have some links for you tonight. Hope everyone's doing well. I've been pretty busy studying for my next exam. That's why I've been quiet and I'm working on some code I can't really um, can't really share too much of. But um, I, as part of that new work I've been doing, I, um, I wanted to start playing with the REST comp on iOS XE. So let me get the whiteboard out and then um, I'll go over the topology and um, sort of what we're going to be doing tonight. Let's see if we can get the whiteboard into focus. So, I'm waiting for my lag to catch up on my other screen. I want to see if the whiteboard's on here or not, if this will work. Maybe move it back a bit. Okay, so what I have is a topology, and I'll show you in CML on this DevNet sandbox that has two iOS XE devices and two NXOS devices. We're going to be working with the XE devices tonight, both of them. And um, we know we can CLI with SSH over port 22. And we know that there are PyETS parsers that give us JSON from show commands. So you can say PyETS parse show IP interface brief. Now, that is kind of limited to the CLI parsers. And it's, it's good data. I, that's sort of what I've been traditionally using. But what we can also do on these devices is enable what's known as the REST Conf interface, which is an API interface over HTTPS 443. And that gives us JSON or XML. We're going to be working with JSON. Yang data. So Yang is a modeling it's not even a protocol, it's, it's, it's the name of the modeling structure. And there's different types of Yang models. So there's IEEE Yang models, there's uh, vendor specific, Cisco has their own models. I'm gonna be using a third flavor known as Open Config. And um, we'll, we'll look at some Open Config information in a second. But why I'm choosing that is because we get both state and configuration back using open config. The other formats, it's just the state information, but with open config, we can get the state and the configuration. So it's two commands to enable rest comp, and I'll show you these commands at the CLI. We have to turn on the IP HTTP secure server to turn up the listening port for to start hosting the HTTPS over 443. And then we just say rest comp, and that enables the rest comp capability on the device. Now the PyTS job, we're going to have a testbed file, which is YAML. And that testbed file uses the REST connector. And we'll show you the documentation for that. So what we're going to do is get the JSON, save a local file, and then do some testing with PyTS. Now, we can test the state and we can test the config meaning we can test our intent for a certain configuration or a certain state and pass or fail the tests based on our intent. So here's some links for you. This is my topology, and I'm using these two top devices here in CML. And how to get that sandbox, if you go to the sandboxes, sandbox labs, and search for CML, you can use the Enterprise Modeling Lab, and that's the one I'm using right now. And then it gives you all the information here in the left panel, the credentials you need and everything. And then if you open port uh, IP address 10.10.20.161, you can log into the Modeling Lab and have access to the devices. Now you shouldn't necessarily need this. You can SSH to these devices with their IP addresses. Uh, my VPN is up. Well, that's not good. Let's try the other one. Okay, that one's up. I might have to reboot. So this sometimes happens. 
And I'm just going to reload this device using the CML CLI. Um, and I'm gonna save the config. I'm not sure why that's happened. I should, I should anyway, should have done that before I started the stream. We'll wait for that device to come up. I still have some documentation to cover. But here's how you enable that RESTCOM capability. Go into config T mode, IP HTTP secure server, and then rest comp. And that's it. That's it. That's all you need to do. Those two commands. Everything else is done off the box. Hey, thanks for joining, Carlos. It's good to see you. So then if you do show rest comp, show run, include rest comp. Right, this is an NXOS. Uh, we can see that rest comp is running <coughs> and i think maybe if we do a show logging and include rest comp it might have said a syslog um, rest comp server has been modified to start okay so we know that rest comp is up and running and um, i gotta reload this device so some some other links we're going to use so that's the cml sandbox that i use there's also an always on, and we'll come back to this always on device, which is always on, and it has rest comp already turned on for you, and there's the URL. We're gonna, we'll come back to this device. We'll use that a little bit later. So again, you go to here, developercisco.com slash site slash sandbox, get started with sandbox, sign in with your account. I use my GitHub, and then search for either CML and that gives you the modeling lab or iOS and look for this always on XE device with programmability capabilities. Okay. So that's the topology and that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to come back to that. We're going to just let this device reload before we get into the code. Now, a couple of other articles I have here. If you go to or search for DevNet 1775, now this is back from 2018, their DevNet in Orlando at Cisco Live. There's an introduction to open config. So this is kind of a good place to get started. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. That's not the point of tonight's stream. But you can see that we're going to be talking to Yang models. And there's native and open. And this is an open model. Native is the Cisco branded or the Cisco flavor. And you can see that we can use netconf for XML or gRPC for JSON, we're going to be using restconf. And you can see here, the principles are that we get config and state containers in the tree. Okay, so that's important. But I would take a look at this document. It's not very long and it'll kind of get you going with this stuff here. And then how do we enable it? There is under developercisco.com enabling rest comp on iOS XE. And again, it's just IP HTTP secure server. And then rest comp. Is it really that easy? Yes, it's really that easy. Happy coding. So, so, so there's a low barrier to entry here. Now this documentation is under developercisco.com docs dash slash rest connector. And this is, REST is a package containing PyATS connection class implementation that allows PyATS scripts to connect to a device via REST using the topology YAML format. And if we go into the user guide under services, under iOS XE, here is the iOS XE and we need to connect to the device. So they give you an example of your test bed and I'll show you my test bed but under our connections, instead of connection using the, the SSH port, we're going to connect over REST using the class REST connector REST. And that's really all we need. So to confirm that, let's just see if this box is up and running, if I can reach it yet from the reboot. Oh, come on. Why does it do it to me like this now? I don't necessarily need both, but that was sort of the point of having the 2.2 routers for scale. Is it? The interface is up there, but I can't reach it. Just rebooted it. I mean, I guess I could bounce my VPN, but 
the other device is up. Oh, there's always something, isn't there? Well, we can just comment this out until I get it to start answering. Is it missing crypto or something? Well, um, hmm. That is unfortunate. I can just comment it out for now. We can test one device and I can try this in a few minutes, maybe once it settles down. I'm not sure why that would be down. Anyway, we'll just comment out that device. So here in Postman, <coughs> Postman can't reach it either. And is Postman talking to it? Okay, Postman's talking to it. So maybe it did come back. So in Postman, in Postman, we go to HTTPS, the IP or DNS name of that box, and then the path to the API we want. And in this case, it's going to be REST Conf, data, open config, because we're using the open config, dash interfaces, colon interfaces. Now this, when I hit send, right, I get a 200 back and I get the JavaScript payload of the interfaces and it's enumerated for each interface in the box. So what you're going to see, what's kind of neat is that there's a config section, a state section, a sub interface section, and an open config ethernet section. So we get four blocks of JSON data. And if we look at ethernet, it is broken down under config and state sub interfaces has again, config and state. Um, and it also has the IPv4 information here and counter information, right? There's the state and there's the open config for IPv4, open config for IPv6. So it's just loaded, loaded with data. And so that's Postman. Now, this is where it's going to be a little bit different or some new stuff. If we hit reveal code, I could do this same thing like this with Python. Right, and, I'll, and I'll prove that to you that this will work. If I go into Python 3, if I go into Python and paste in that code, yeah, I have to modify because it's not, hang on, let me do something real quick. Uh, add verify equals false. Right? there is the, the payload, right? So I could easily take that request libraries Python and, and get this Pythonically. But what I thought I would do is use the rest conf capability of PyTS to see, just to compare the, the experience between the two. And I gotta say, I really like it. It abstracts so much of that. I don't have to specify headers I don't need to make a list or a loop of, uh, of URLs to loop over to get the data. It's all done in PyETS. So the start, starting place is the testbed.yaml file where I describe both of those routers, their operating system. And here the connection is REST and I'm using the REST connector REST and the IP and the credentials and the REST credentials specifically. So that's what I need. That's all I need to do. I just describe my iOS XE devices in a testbed file. And now I have my connector, rest connector is just what I've called this, underscore job. Now my job file is a PyETS specific file that it's, it's sort of like the setup. It, it like loads this testbed file for us and calls the Python code, which we're going to look at next, and then does the runtime handling for us with Python. So I don't need to declare main or any of that stuff. I'm defining main here for my runtime. So let's take a look at the actual code and then we'll run some code. Now I'm not importing very much. I'm bringing in JSON because I'm, I'm going to be working with JSON and logging so that PyTS has a logging capability to print logs to the screen. 
And then I'm bringing in PyETS AE test and PyETS log utils banner so I can get some nice banners. The other one I'm bringing in is tabulate because I want to make tables of my tests when we get there. And we'll come back to tests. So let's, um, let's take a look at the rest of the code and then I'll load up a virtual environment and run it and then we'll do some work with it. And I'm also going to quickly make, I wanted to do this. Let's go into my GitHub and make a branch on this repository because I know, oh, I, yeah, so I have a, I've committed my initial commit. All this is working code. Let's make a branch called live stream, create the branch. And then we're going to get fetch and switch over to live stream. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is get is set up log, which is logging get logger and then the name function method from uh, Python. Then we're going to set up our AE test. So this is our common setup for AE test. Now AE test usually has a common setup and then your testing section and then if you needed a tear down section or a finish, a finish section. So AE test uses decorators. These at AE test dot something, these are the decorators that we can use that abstract a lot of what's happening behind the scenes in the Python. So then we make a little function here, connect to all devices, self, and then the test bed, which we've loaded in via the job. So we're going to connect to those rest comp APIs first in our, in our uh, setup section. Now this next bit of code is new to me today. And a big special thank you to Palmer sample who pointed me in the right direction. Now I'm going to show you something and it's, it's fairly advanced, I would say. If we look at PyETS loops, they have a looping section. And this is, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but we support, AE test also supports section looping. We're using section code body by providing it with different parameters during each loop iteration, which is what we want, right? We have two files or 30 not files, uh, 30 entries, 30 devices, three devices, two devices, right? One plus N devices in our test bed. And we want to repeat the same tests and do the same things over each device that's in the test bed file. So the shorter I have some examples here, it's, it's very abstract. It's a little bit, it took me a, a couple stabs at this this afternoon to get this going, but, um, there's a whole, you know, it's fully, fully loaded looping with AE test. And again, it's under AE test infrastructure looping sections and then how to do all this stuff. There was a Cisco live, um, example that I followed that helped me more. I don't have the article handy. Um, but there, there is, I'm not sure if I'll be able to find it. Cisco live PyTS loops. Anyhow, I should have had that ready there in one of the PDFs from Cisco live. They have a very good example about looping. Okay. So let's get back to the code. So we're going to have another subsection for AE test in our common setup. And this is going to use a loop mark. And again, we're passing itself and the test bed and we say AE test dot loop dot mark. And then we pass it the class that we want to loop. And our parameter in this case is going to be our test bed devices. So that is the loop mechanism. Give it the list of devices from our test bed and mark that as device name. So that is the first AE test loop mark in this common setup where we loop these classes. And now I'm into my actual class. And for now, I've just called it input discards. I should let's just change this to be test interfaces. instead of test input, because we're going to do more than just input discards. So first I have a setup function and this is an AE test, not a subsection. Okay. So this is an actual AE test dot test. 
and each of these will come back with a pass fail result. So this test setup, we pass it self test bed and the device name, the looping mechanism. We set self dot device as test bed devices device name so that on that iteration of the loop, it tags the first or second or X number of devices. Now we're now going to loop our functions, right? So we're going to get the Yang data first. We're going to create the files. We're going to test interface input discards. So now this, um, and, and what I can do is let's comment out, let's do this in chunks. So I'm just going to comment out some stuff here and um, we'll just get the Yang data. Whoops. Whoops. We'll get the Yang data and let's print it to the screen. So dot parse JSON. Yeah, let's just print it. And it's not going to be pretty printed or rich printed or anything. We're just going to print it. So let's get our virtual environment going here. So we're going to do Python 3 MVENV -E and we're going to call this, what do I call it in the readme file? REST connector. REST connector. And then we're going to source REST connector bin activator virtual environment. And we're going to pip install pi ATS square bracket full square bracket. In theory, I might not need full. I could probably pick and choose just AE test and the logging capability or whatever, but I'll just do full. That's not a big deal. <clears throat> Okay, so then we're going to pip install tabulate as well. Do I not need to pip install tabulate? Maybe not. Okay, so now let's run our job, which is pyats run job rest Oh, hang on. Sorry, cd Excuse me. PyTS run job rest connector underscore job. And what we should get are two. Yeah, the import rest connector. Do I need to pip install that? Uh, hang on. Is that not part of PyTS? Uh, sorry, one second. PyTS. Connector. I was in a different virtual environment. I thought I would set up one fresh. I need to add this to the readme file anyway. Let's just try it. Okay, so it's not part of the PyTS fold. Good to know. Let me add that to the readme file. It's still not running. Tabulate, yeah, so I need to pip install. Hang on. Well, I may as well update the readme as we go here. Uh, I thought I did pip install. Tabulate. There we go. All right, I must have spelled it wrong. Okay, sorry, excuse me. Uh, pi ATS run job rest connector job.py. And what we should get is two blobs of JSON on the screen. And again, give me a shout out if you're tuning in from around the world. I'd love to know where you're from. Questions, if you need me to repeat anything or go over anything again, just let me know. I am monitoring the chat. And this is having a problem connecting to, I thought I had. Can I still not? But it works.
Shirts and Postman. That's strange. Um, hmm. I'll just check my host file. Oh, that's why my host file is not there. Sorry, I just sudo vi'd my uh, Etsy hosts. Is that the issue? It's having a problem connecting, and I'm not sure why. Postman works, and I can SSH to it. This was working earlier. What's up with my Ubuntu? Uh, well, that sucks. I'm not sure what's going on with my Ubuntu. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it is up, but not in WSL. Let me, let me start a new terminal. Sure, what gives here? Well, of course, when I start the stream, it starts to bomb. Um, hmm, it's strange because Windows can curl it, Postman's working, it's just that my Ubuntu WSL is not working. Maybe if I stop and start WSL.
got an interface that has an IP address. Hey, thanks for coming in from New Jersey. I'm sorry you're watching me struggle here. All of a sudden, my WSL cannot... I don't know if it's the stream that has screwed this up. Uh, is it my name server, maybe? Um... Let me Let me edit that. Maybe it's my name server. Shouldn't need it. I'm not using DNS though. I'm using IP. drop my VPN maybe uh, it doesn't make any sense something wrong with Ubuntu through the VPN right now let me drop my VPN connection and um, and reconnect I don't know maybe that'll do it it's very strange out of the blue my my WSL stopped working through the VPN. Hey Angel, thanks for joining. I'm just not sure why my, uh, I hate to reboot because then I got to restart the stream, but it looks like a reboot might be my only option at this point. Um, I guess let me try that. I'll turn the stream right back on um, immediately. Uh, so tune in. Let me just give my system a reboot. I'll be right back. Sorry about that, everyone. Sorry about the disturbance.